The more that I really try to understand this whole Ben Simmons situation, the more confused that I actually become. October 22nd, the Brooklyn Nets would face off against the Philadelphia 76ers. The Philadelphia 76ers would go on to lose what would be a pretty close game. I may get a lot of hate for saying this, but if the Philadelphia 76ers had a healthy and engaged Ben Simmons this game, there's a possibility that they walk away with a W. Anyways, I'm kind of getting a little off topic. October 22nd, Joel Embiid would give this speech in front of the Philadelphia 76er crowd. Oh, what's up guys? It's good to have you back. On behalf of my teammates, the organization, and myself, I just want to say thank you for your support, uh, you know, all these years and and then now, and uh, you know, a lot has happened the last few months, and I urge you guys to continue to support us and our teammate Ben, because he's still our brother. Let's go! Once again, Joel B. Now, I can't be the only person in the world that this speech shocked, right? Joel Embiid is literally the same guy that said this. At this point, I don't care about that man, honestly. He does whatever he wants. Uh, you know, that's not my job. Uh, you know, that's those guys' job. Uh, you know, I'm only focused on trying to make the team better, uh, win some games, uh, you know, play hard every night, uh, try to lead, you know, the guys that we have here. Uh, and I'm sure they feel the same way because, you know, our chemistry has been excellent. Like I said, I'm not good at uh, I'm going to try to give Joel Embiid the benefit of the doubt because he does come off as a pretty genuine person to me. And to be honest, a lot has happened since that whole babysitting quote. And we're going to cover it in this video. But before we go any further, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. You will not want to miss another Get Like Coop video. And that's facts. Guys, also be sure to check out my socials. The handles are on the screen. October 21st, Shams reported, this quote 76ers all-star Ben Simmons is currently not mentally ready to play for the team and was receiving treatment on his back today due to the ramp up process he will miss Friday's home opener versus the Nets and is not expected to play for an undetermined period of time there were people hating on this report and Ben Simmons when this report dropped and I really don't think that that's the move at all some people flat out didn't believe that Ben Simmons could mentally not be ready for basketball. In other words, there are some people that believe that Ben Simmons is faking this whole thing. As a matter of fact, there was a report that came out that that was what the Sixers actually believe. Now, I'm not going to show you guys the report because I actually question its credibility. But if for any reason you really want to find it, I quote tweeted it on Twitter and I replied to it saying this. Just assuming he's faking mental illness is a slippery slope, impossible to prove, and typically dangerous. Millionaire or not, I couldn't handle millions of people slandering me every day. A few bad YouTube comments gets me down sometimes, but again, everyone's different. On top of that, it's not just the internet slandering him. It's people that I'm sure he thought were close to him. This is my first time seeing this report, and if there's more like it, lob me the link. It would be a terrible thing to do, if true. I really do feel bad for Ben Simmons in this situation. Could you imagine having to stay in a city, show your face in a city where you felt like everybody hated you? While some people are able to embrace that type of environment, everybody's different. And I know for myself, being in that type of environment would be incredibly tough. Also, I'd like to say that it's always easy to say and to feel like you'd be able to do something as opposed to actually doing it. On the same day that these Ben Simmons reports dropped, Daryl Morey dropped an absolute anchor. Would you rather eliminate what people perceive to be a distraction or would you rather have better playoff odds? I'll take playoff odds. Whatever we have to deal with that helps the Philadelphia 76ers win the title, we'll do it. You're going to think I'm kidding, I'm not. This could go on for years. We're in the prime of Joel's career. Either Ben Simmons is playing for us, or we have to get back a difference maker. Now look, I'm not that so raven. I can't see the future. But at least according to that quote, it seems like Maury is willing to go the distance with this whole Ben Simmons thing. Look, I get that Ben Simmons is locked up and under contract for the foreseeable future. But at least to me, 
this whole Ben Simmons situation seems like a giant distraction. If I'm a player, I'm definitely paying attention to the way Daryl Morey is handling this whole Ben Simmons situation. And that's not me saying that Ben Simmons has been perfect. I guess I just feel like both sides could have handled this situation better. Let me know if I'm tripping down in the comments below. October 22nd, Ben Simmons would speak to Doc Rivers, Joel Embiid, and the entire 76ers team. And everyone accepted that they need to take responsibility, including Simmons himself. But Simmons informed them that he's not mentally ready to play yet, and he still needs some time. Shams doubled down on that report, saying that Ben was seen engaged around the team. The three-time All-Star has expressed that he wants to play, but just isn't ready yet. Even though Embiid was incredibly hard on Simmons last week, I thought it was awesome to see him get Simmons back before the Nets game. Here's what Embiid had to say after the Nets game, and I want you guys to let me know if you feel like Embiid's being genuine here. Uh, he was, I mean, he was good. Uh, you know, finally, uh, that was the first time uh, any of us, uh, you know, um, heard it. Uh, I thought, I thought he was good for the crew. Are you hopeful that things can continue to move in a good direction? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, that's the uh, that's a, that's the a first step. Uh, that's the start. Uh, hopefully, um, you know that. Uh, like I always said, that's on the front office. Uh, hopefully, we'll figure out you know what's best. Uh, uh, obviously, for the team, because uh, you know this is a business uh, team. Uh, uh, we're trying to find ways, you know, uh, to win. And for us, we have a big opportunity. And like I always said, we we are better with it. Uh, so you know, uh, we I wouldn't mind you know playing with them. Uh, I don't. My teammates also wouldn't uh, because at the end of the at the end of the day, we, we're just trying to win. Embiid said that he wouldn't mind sharing the floor with Simmons again. While I'm not entirely sure if that's true, I think at this point there's a good chance that them sharing the floor again happens, even if it's only for Ben Simmons to raise his trade value. It's hard to get fair value when everybody knows that you're trying to get rid of something. Tobias said that the 76ers plan on respecting Ben's privacy in space. When he's ready, they'll embrace him. They'll embrace their brother with love and handle their business on the court. That's it. That's all. It's so crazy the difference that a year makes. According to ESPN, last year Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid were one of the best duos in the NBA by record. They won 35 of 42 games that they played together. Look man, I don't know, if you ask me, I think that's pretty good. In the comments below, let me know how you guys feel about everything surrounding Ben Simmons and the Philadelphia 76ers. Regardless of how you feel about either party, I think we could all agree that it would be better if there was a solution sooner rather than later. Clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel. I'm Get Like Coop bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload.